Thanks for staying with us. We're going to start with the nation. Government takes minimum wage talks to Nigerians in zones. CBM slashes customs ex, uh, forex duty rate. Undo varsity workers disrupt convocation. White telcos barred 40 million telephone lines. Akere Dolu's wife blast in law for backing Aida Tiwa. Police to arraign 15 for Abuja warehouse looting. Transcorp power hit two trillion naira on listing rally. And tearful Dango Dangote immortalizes um, Yugui. Okay. Right, which story are we starting okay, with? I'll start with um, Telco. So it's been reported that no fewer than 40 million telephone subscribers have been barred from receiving or making calls. Um, NCC, that's the Nigerian Communications Commission, and then we also have mobile network operators are explaining the reason why. So um, they say that if we remember, the, um, N NCC had given a deadline for, you know, lines and BVNs to be linked properly on, you know, <clears throat> that was in, they gave a December, in December 2023, they gave a December, uh, a February 28th deadline. And so the deadline came and passed and many of the numbers were found not to have been linked to their NIN, nor their BVN. So um, they're saying that for some of them, there were um, some irregularities uh, when they were, when they were um, registering for their NIN some, uh, or their BVN. So some would use like their first name, uh, a different first name for registration for one, and then use the first name as last name for registration for another. So many of those irregularities. They said, but what they have to do now is go and physically um, change those, that eventually it may... Uh, be, it's something that we'll be able to do virtually, but now you have to physically go to these different offices and make sure you regularize that. And so, but 40 million Nigerians, mm, like, is it, were they all irregularities? Uh, There's some that were, you know, just on our, the part of um, the banks as well and the, um, the mobile operators themselves, like, 40 million is just such a huge yeah. number. I don't I'm understand. sure it was second numbers, third numbers. Because I have a third number too that was probably... But you can link it. But I didn't want well. to anymore. I just okay. I dashed them. <laughs> Let me take the major headlines. So ongoing talks on the new national women, minimum wage will take a break from the boardroom to the states and regions. So what the federal government is doing is they're taking away that conversation from Abuja to all the various zones. According to the report here, six cities across the geopolitical zones will host discussions to enable Nigerians from all walks of life to contribute to the proposal. So they're going to be in um, Yola, North, in Northeast, Kano, Northwest, Abuja, Central, Uyo, South, South, Enugu, Southeast, and Lagos, Southwest. So the Minister of Finance said yesterday that the essence of the meeting is to gather diverse perspectives and recommendations. Um, they also said that in Southwest, they expected to be, the meeting is supposed to be chaired by the Minister of Finance, Wali Adun, and um, others who are expected to be there are labor union, business leaders, government officials, um, even the minister of, um, I think there's another minister, minister to be there, of state of labor and employment um, in Kiruka, Onye Jocha would also be there. And there'll be representatives from TUC, NLC, um, private companies, medium enterprises, manufacturers association. I think it's a good idea to, to, to expand the conversation. So some are proposing 200,000. Remember, the time Labour was proposing a millionaire or something like that. But either way... Yeah, the um, the debates between what is a living wage, what is a minimum wage, and yeah. all that. So hopefully, yeah. with this conversation, things will Yes, yeah, so I have the... Um, on the uh, sorry, on those states story. So the widow of the former, uh, the late governor of um, on those states, I think she's very bitter. This is very sensitive for me to take, but she took to Facebook. Yes. I said it like I said it. <laughs> she took to Facebook to address um, the, the niece to her husband, who was former deputy chief protocol to the late governor, who had a picture of her with a face cap written on it, I am lucky, showing support for the present governor and his, his ambition to become governor um, full time, for his own full time. And she says, Behold the face of Akiti's niece, Funke Akiri Doluaruna, the former deputy chief protocol to Akiti, shamelessly parades as I am lucky. 
bloody serpent. Time will tell if she's truly lucky. That's now, a hot topic. I very think, hot. I think it's hot topic. Let's, 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 so. let's, let's slow it down. It might be a hot I think topic. so. <laughs> so but, um, I saw it. I was like... You know, this is morning. Yeah. Mm. She's in grief. Yeah. And okay. she should separate it all. Okay. I guess people... There are different, they're different levels, but mm. let, let me take another story. Yeah, so I'm taking the CBN. I've been following up on the import duty story. I think um, last week, <clears throat> two weeks ago, it was raised to 1,600 um, plus. That's 1,730 as the pegged rate for um, import duties. But the CBN reviewed it downward, said that because there's been a relative stability in the FF, um, F foreign exchange, and so it's now pegged at five, 1,544 naira to a dollar, which represents a 5.3% decrease. 5.3% decrease. Um, as at Friday, it was 1,600. Today is 1,544. And they're saying that because of the volatility, there's going to be regular changes like that. But on the platform, as of yesterday, it was reading 1,544. So um, I'm excited that is, is they're reflecting, is they're, they're not slow in reflecting the changes within the economy. And I, I, I will see what the, um, peop, the, the protest was very loud when they increased it to 1,600. But right now, there was no comment from the importers that I have complained then that it's not been reviewed downwards. Let's, let's appreciate effort okay. when it's done. Moving on to the punch. OPS warns of uh, shutdown as hoodlums loot more trucks. I think that's organized, organized uh, private sector. Mm. Banks involved in 70% of financial crimes, says EFCC. Ooh, that's a lot. <laughs> NSCDC to Mpolo men raise Undo oil thieves hideout. SIM and NIN, NCC defense blocking of phone lines, lawyer slams 10 billion era suit. Mm -hmm. Africa Development Bank plans $2.7 billion budget agri loans for Nigeria. Dangote names Refinery Road after Wigwe and approach Zimbabwe for solution to inflation of Basanjo tells federal government. All right. Yes, I have um, banks involved in 70% of financial crimes. The EFCC chairman says at the um, annual retreat and general meeting of Association of Chief Audit Executives of Banks in Nigeria. So this is a retreat that they have annually. The EFCC chairman was there and he pointed out that the banking sector was increasingly becoming a cesspool of fraudulent activities. And this has been mm -hmm. um, raising considerable challenges and concerns to the commission. He explained it in two ways. He says this um, fraud that happens, he's, he talked about the outsider-related one and the insider-related ones. So he said that um, the outside-related ones include maybe hacking, ATM fraud, conspiracy, among others. And then the insider-related ones, he said that um, the uh, comprise of outright selling of customers' deposits, authorizing loan facilities, forgery, and several other kinds of unhealthy criminal practices. Then he says, then there's what happens where you now have the inside and the outside merging. That's a collaboration of criminals inside and outside, he says, and that is such a, you know, it's a, it's a disgrace that we have that right now in our banking sector. And so he was calling the body ACAEBIN to do everything that they can, you know, to do their part, which is um, make sure that they do proper reconciliation of accounts every month in accordance with the accounting requirements. And then um, the chairman of the body also said that, you know, the retreat is a time for self-reflection. They understand the responsibility upon them and they're going to do everything to make sure that, you know, they sanitize the banking um, sector. Okay, let's go on a short break now. When we come back, we continue with our reviews. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. 